All right, this video is gonna be different, but cool. You remember the video we did about the Terramaster F4 423 that we did recently? You know, the high performance NAS that was underwhelming in the performance department. Yeah, that one. Anyway, one of the big takeaways from that video was that the F4 423 is basically just a little computer in a NAS enclosure, complete with their regular BIOS boot and everything. One of our viewers threw out a comment saying something to the effect of, why not install TrueNAS on it? So, let's do it. Hey there, home labbers and cell posters. Rich here. The Terramaster F4 423 was underwhelming in its current incarnation, but what if we gave it an OS transplant and swapped out their Lynx OS for TrueNAS scale? Will it perform the same or will it reach its full potential? Let's get to it. All right, let's get some caveats out of the way here before we move forward. The first big one is that the Terramaster F4 423 does not support ECC RAM. While technically scale does not require ECC RAM to run, it's very highly recommended to use ECC because ZFS relies so much on RAM for caching. And if a bit flip were to happen or something got corrupted in RAM, well, let's just say that's not a good thing for your data. Secondly, I'm not advocating that anyone do this if they own an F4 423 NAS. This is all about the what if and not about building a production stable storage system. Cool? All right, first stop, let's upgrade some RAM. The F4 423 comes standard with four gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. Four gigs is not enough for scale or most anything these days, really. So my first stop here is to tear the unit apart and throw in two eight gigabyte sodium RAM modules to get our little unit up to 16 gigs of RAM, which is still pretty lean for scale, but it's so much better than the stock four gigs. Next step is getting scale installed on the unit. Installation was incredibly easy to do since, you know, it's really just a little computer. I booted off the USB stick, ran through the scale setup, and off we went. Unfortunately, getting the unit to reliably boot into scale was not so easy. Initially, I had left the little boot USB thumb drive plugged into the motherboard, and no matter what I did, the unit would always default back to it. I was trying all combinations of different BIOS configs until finally I did the reasonable thing and just pulled the USB stick from the F423's motherboard. That seemed to be the ticket to get past the boot priority and get scale reliably booting on the unit. Hooray! And I tell you what, the UI and the user experience running scale is great. The system is snappy, functional, and no different than running scale on server hardware. I'm not honestly sure why I thought it wouldn't be, but thumbs up on the user experience anyway. The only thing left to do is to give this Frankensteinian abomination a name and test it. First thought was to name it TerraScale. Turns out there's a company called TerraScale, so that's not gonna work. Then in a blast of inspiration, it hit me. Scale Master. That's it. So, introducing, ladies and gentlemen, Scale Master. <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how I've set up the pool. The F4 423 has four disks, so I provisioned this as a RAID Z1. And for testing, I've directly connected a Windows 11 PC to the Scale Master, and I'm testing with Crystal Disk Mark over Windows SMB. You ready for some results? And it kicks some serious ass. In the sequential one megabyte block test with a Q depth of eight and a thread of one, the scale master buried the needle in both read and write tests. The beauty of ZFS RAM caching was on full display here and it just rocked that 2.5 gigabit connection. In the sequential one megabyte block test with a Q of one and a thread of one, again, we saw some pretty fantastic numbers in both read and write pulling in over 245 megabytes a second, which is just fantastic. In the random 4K block test with a Q of 32 and a thread of one, we saw great writes and good reads that were commensurate with random read write tests. And in the random 4K with a Q of one and a thread of one, the worst case disk testing you can do for mechanical drives, we came in at 17.77 megabytes read and 10.3 megabytes write respectively. I don't know what to say. These numbers were fantastic and I was kind of blown away by how well scale runs on this hardware. When I think of scale and storage performance, I tend to get wrapped around the axles of performance requires power. And this was a perfect example of why that's not really the case. And with the flexibility of scale running on here, you can run containers and VMs and have your home lab in a single box. But the ECC RAM situation makes it a pretty high risk. If the F4 423 supported ECC RAM, I'd be recommending this as a pre-built chassis for anyone who didn't want to roll their own NAS, but alas, it doesn't. Wah, wah. So my final thoughts are this. You can do this if you have the chassis, but you potentially risk data corruption. What that probability is, is anyone's guess, but you probably don't want to risk your data if it's important. For a fun what if experiment though, it was a blast. 
And that, friends, is gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, throw us a sub and a like, or if you disagree with anything that I've said or done here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members for supporting us. If you like what we do here, consider becoming a member or buy some swag. It all helps us continue making videos. And now that you finish this video, check out our playlist over here of other great tech DIY videos we've done in the past. Scale Master!